Creation of the transist site, I have opened rotate underscore transition dot html. You can find a copy of this file in the Using CSS Transforms and Transitions folder of the course assets. If I turn on Live View, you can see that the two images have been rotated. That's using the CSS Transform property. What I want to do is, when you mouse over these images, is to rotate them back to their normal position and then scale them up to their normal size. And I want to do that with a smooth transition. So that means using the CSS Transitions panel. The panel is normally grouped with the CSS Designer. So open it. If you can't find it, open the Window menu and select CSS Transitions. There's no keyboard shortcut. So to create a CSS transition, click the plus button at the top of the panel. This opens the new transition dialog box. The target rule, if you open that little menu by clicking the down arrow, it gives you a list of all the styles already defined in your style sheet. I've got two classes there, rotate left and rotate right, div and image. What I would really like to do is to apply the transition to both rotate left and rotate right. And the easiest way of doing that is to create a new class. So I'm going to cancel this new transition by clicking the cancel button. Then exit live view. And then I'll select the first image. And in the property inspector, open the class menu and select apply multiple classes. Because I haven't specified this class in my style sheet, I need to type it down here where it says type to specify undefined classes. Add a space after rotate left and then type smooth. And click OK. And do the same with the second image. So I'm now ready to create my transition. Go back to the CSS Transitions panel, click the plus button. If I open Target Rule, it hasn't registered that new class that I've created because it's only in the HTML, it's not in the style sheet. No problem, you can type directly in the Target Rule field. So period or dot smooth, that's my class. And the next option is what you wanted to transition on. This is a list of pseudo classes. And the pseudo class we want is hover. We can use the same transition for all properties. Next, set the duration of the transition. I'm going to make it one second. S is for second. If you open that little menu, you've got MS for milliseconds, one thousandth of a second. Delay. I don't want to delay on it. Timing function, by default the timing function is linear, so if you leave this blank you'll get a linear transition, which means it's the same pace all the way along. But if you open this, I'm going to choose ease in out, which means that it starts off slow, speeds up and then slows down towards the end. And then the property or properties on which you want to have the transition, click the plus button underneath this field here. And this gives you a list of all properties that can be animated. Not everything can be animated, but the transform property can. And it's listed down here. And then you need to provide an end value. So it's what you want the value to be at the end of the transition. So I want it to be rotate. Open parenthesis, zero DEG, no space between that zero and the degree. Then a space and scale, open parenthesis, 1.5, close parenthesis. So this will scale up the images by one and a half times. Finally, choose where to create the transition. I'm doing everything in the head of the document, but if you've got an external style sheet, this is where you would choose it. And then finally, click Create Transition. And let's turn on Live View to see the result. Mouse over, it scales and rotates, and the operation, the transition, is nice and smooth. Now obviously, we need to position things a little bit better, but still, it's a very nice transition. 
So let's take a look at the style rules that have been created by opening Split View and scroll down a little bit. There we are. There's the new style rule that's been created, the class for Smooth with the Transition property and the Smooth Hover style rule with the Transform. This is the end value that we want at the end of the transition. The version of Dreamweaver CC that I'm using adds vendor-specific prefixes for all browsers for both Transition and Transform. But that might not be the case with your version. Browser support is improving rapidly, so updated versions of Dreamweaver will stop using the vendor-specific prefixes. However, leaving them in your style sheet does no harm. Now, what if you want to change your mind about the transition? That's no problem. You can go to the CSS Transitions panel and select the pseudo class that triggers the transition, in this case Hover. And if you want to edit, click the pencil icon and that opens the same dialog box. You make your changes and then save them. If you want to remove a transition, then click the minus button and it opens this dialog box. Don't just click remove without looking at these various options because they can be quite important depending on how your styles are organized. The options that have been selected here would remove the entire smooth class and also this hover style rule. In this case that would be fine because they don't contain anything other than transition and transform but if you've got other properties in there you need to select transition properties rather than entire rule and you also need to consider whether you want to remove the transition on rule as well. I've added that new class to the elements. If I were to just click remove, it would also remove the smooth class from the HTML for the images. I don't want to remove anything, so I'm just going to click cancel. So that's how you use the CSS transitions panel in Dreamweaver CC. CSS transitions are simple animations that smooth the transition from one state to another without the need for JavaScript. They're supported by the latest versions of all browsers, but Internet Explorer didn't begin to support them until IE10.